at the termination of the module, you will be equipped to know an introduction of institutions of trade and their importance, understand the importance of international trade in India, identify the institutional framework for international trade in India in depth. A suitable framework institutionally acts as a catalyst of growth of external trade. In a nation as ours that is developing, the growth index of exports acts as the real benchmark of sustained economic development. Only with the assistance of a framework, growth which is sustained in exports can be accelerated. Nowadays, competition and dynamism are the rule of international trade. Responsive framework necessarily to make exports compete globally is essential. In order to harness these gains from trade, the transaction cost in turn dependent on the framework support involved need to be low for trading within the country and for the international trade. Development strategies vital part international trade is and could result in becoming an effective tool of economic growth, generation of employment and poverty alleviation. Changing almost daily, market conditions require quick response and more importantly, anticipation of the future requirements. Essentially, the framework has to remain in pace and change in anticipation to gear with the changing requirements and only then can international trade pick up the speed envisaged. This unit will show you the way of learning about such organizations of international importance that assist in free flow of international trade in India and get the know-how of the institutional framework in India for international trade promotion. Importance of international trade in India. International trade can be termed as the exchange of goods and services across national borders. The international trade system sees a major impact of industrialization, advanced technology, including globalization, transportation, outsourcing, and multinational corporations. It is crucial to keep the pace of international trade up for continuous growth of each and every economy. If international trade were missing, the variety would be limited to the domestic borders. In India and across the globe, for providing, regulating and creating necessary environment for its orderly growth, several acts have been put in place. The Foreign Trade of India is governed by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act of 1992 and the rules and orders issued there under. Institutional Framework for International Trade in India We will discuss a brief of institutional framework for trade policies in India. The responsibility of formulating and implementing the trade policy in India lies with the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Reserve Bank of India. The Department of Commerce at the Ministry of Commerce and Industry plays an important role for the formulation of India's international trade and commercial policy and its implementation. Institutional Framework for Trade Policies With the assistance and guidance of other ministries and agencies, which include the likes of the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Reserve Bank of India, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry formulates and implements the trade policy. On the advice of the Director General of Foreign Trade, the government formulates India's foreign trade policy, which is also known as FTP, after the consultation with various trade bodies such as the Federation of Indian Export Organizations, the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, the Federation of Indian Industries and various export promotion councils. A periodic review of the FTP takes place to take into account the domestic and international events and is issued every five years. Through the issue of notifications by the Director General of Foreign Trade, an office attached to the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the FTP is updated, which is in charge of implementing it. Also, within the Ministry, the Tariff Commission issues recommendations on the appropriate tariff levels. 
However, the Central Board of Excise and Custom at the Ministry of Finance is the body responsible for the tariff and other duties. First, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Comprising of a twin department framework, the Department of Commerce and the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, this ministry is headed by a Minister of Cabinet rank. Nirmala Sitaraman is currently the incumbent Minister of Commerce and Industry, which has the independent charge. The responsibility of the department lies in formulating and implementing the foreign trade policy and its other mandates related to the multilateral and bilateral commercial relations, state trading, export promotion measures and development and regulation of certain export oriented industries and commodities. A. The Department of Commerce The eight divisions of the Department of Commerce assist in the smooth functioning. Administrative and General Division, Finance Division, Economic Division, Trade Policy Division, Foreign Trade Territorial Division, State Trading and Infrastructure Division, Supply Division, Plantation Division. The Department of Commerce also exercises administrative control on the following. International Trade, Foreign Trade, State Trading, Management of Indian Trade Services, Special Economic Zones. B. Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, which is also known as DIPP. Now, established in the year 1995, Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion was merged with the Department of Industrial Development in the year 2000. Formulation and implementation of promotional and developmental measures for growth of the industrial sector, keeping in view the national priorities, and socio-economic objectives are the areas for which the department is responsible. Also, facilitation and increasing the FDI flows to the country lies under its purview. DIPP is also responsible for intellectual property rights relating to patents, designs, trademarks and geographical indication of goods and oversees the initiative relating to their promotion and protection. Second. Ministry of External Affairs The Ministry of External Affairs, which is also abbreviated as MEA, also known as the Foreign Ministry, is the government agency which is responsible for the conduct of India's relationship with the foreign countries. The Ministry's responsibility is to represent the country in the United Nations and advise other ministries and state governments when the latter have dealing with the foreign governments or institutions. A. Current Structure The Foreign Secretary is the senior most civil servant who is head of the Department of Foreign Affairs and is supported by other secretary level officers. Foreign Secretary Secretary West Secretary East Special Secretary, that is ER and DPA, and Additional Secretary. B. Development Partnership Administration, which is known as DPA. It is an agency under the Ministry of External Affairs, which is formed in 2013, as there was an increase in the strategic footprint of India. The formation of DPA was undertaken so that the projects with professionals from varied backgrounds are effectively executed. DPA plays a very significant role given that India has an elaborate project portfolio in its neighborhood including Bhutan, Nepal, Afghanistan, Maldives, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh as well as Africa and Latin America. Third, Export Promotion Councils. Registered as non-profit organizations under the Companies Act or Societies Registration Act, these councils are presently 14 in number. These are an offshoot of the administrative control of the Department of Commerce. These councils perform both advisory and executive functions. The foreign trade policy is the guiding force behind the role and functions of these councils. Under the foreign trade policy 2009 to 2014, these councils are also to act as registering authorities for exporters. To name a few, basic chemicals, Pharmaceuticals and Cosmetics Export Promotion Council, which is also known as Chemexil, Chemicals and Allied Product Export Promotion Council, which is also known as Capexil, Council for Leather Exports, Sports Good, 
Export Promotion Council, Gem and Jewelry Export Promotion Council, Shellac Export Promotion Council, Cashew Export Promotion Council of India, the Plastics Export Promotion Council, Pharmaceutical Export Promotion Council, Indian Oil Seed and Produce Export Promotional Council, Services Export Promotion Councils, among others. Fourth, Exim Bank. The Export Import Bank of India Act of 1981 acted as the routing factor of the India's premier export finance institution, Export Import Bank of India, which came into existence in 1982. Its main role lies in catalyzing and promoting cross-border trade and investment. Since its inception, the Exim Bank commenced its operations as a purveyor of export credit like other export credit agencies in the world. An institution that plays a major role in partnering Indian industries, particularly the small and the medium enterprises, is what this institution has grown to become over the period. Organization managed by a board of directors, has representation from the government, Reserve Bank of India, Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India, a financial institution, public sector bank and the business community. The bank's function are as follows, which are segmented into several operating groups. The first segment is Corporate Banking Group. Its function is Variety of programs for financing for export-oriented units, importers and overseas investments by Indian companies. Second is the project finance or trade finance group. The main functions of this group is provision of varied forms of export credit services to spread ahead the initiative to promote and support agricultural exports. The third group is the small and medium enterprises. Their main functions are Handling of proposals from SME under various lending programs of the bank for credit proposals. Fourth is Export Services Group. Their functions are aimed at investment promotion and this groups take care of the provision of a range of advisory and value added information services. And the last group is Export Marketing Services Bank. Now these bank offer support to companies in India in order to allow them establish their products in overseas market. Fifth, DGFT, the Directorate General of Foreign Trade, which is also known as DGFT, is the agency of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry of the Government of India, which is responsible for administering laws regarding foreign trade and foreign investments in India. Provision of a comprehensive database of all exporters and importers of India, which is easy to search. It is the agency of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry of the Government of India, which is also responsible for executing the import and export policies of India. Earlier known as the Chief Controller of Imports and Exports was renamed in 1991. DGFT plays a very important role in developing trade relations with various other nations and henceforth assisting in the improvement of economic growth, simultaneously providing a certain impetus needed in the trade industry. For promoting export and imports, DGFT establishes its regional offices across the country. It reports to the Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Its headquarters are in Udyog Bhavan, New Delhi. It has four zonal offices at Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai, which have Zonal Joint Director General of Foreign Trade as their in charge. There are 35 regional authorities all over the country. Its responsibilities include, first, implementation of various policies regarding trade, for instance, foreign trade policy. Second, for exporters, importers and export and import business, it is the licensing authority. Third, prohibition, restriction and regulation exports and imports are under the purview of DGFT. Fourth, DGFT has important role to issue notifications, public notices, circulars, etc. Fifth, 10-digit IEC, that is Importer-Exporter Code, which is a primary requirement to import-export is also granted by DGFT. And sixth, throughout the country, the DGFT is the introducer of different schemes regarding the benefits of trade. 
Sixth organization is India Trade Promotion Organization, which is also known as ITPO. The ITPO headquarters at Pragati Maidan is the nodal agency of the Government of India under the AGs of Ministry of Commerce and Industry for promoting countries' external trade. It is marked by a range of extensive infrastructure as well as marketing and information facilities that are being availed by both exporters and importers. The main activities of this are upkeep and maintenance of trade fair complexes at Pragati Maidan, organization of various trade fairs for trade and exhibitions, participation in overseas trade fairs and exhibitions, facilitation of the use of Pragati Maidan, establishment of durable contracts between Indian suppliers and overseas buyers, encouraging micro, small and medium scale units in export promotion efforts, trade information services through electronic accessibility, bringing buyers and sellers together by the means of organization of buyer-seller meets and other exclusive India shows. Seventh, Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, which is also known as IIFT. The Indian Institute of Foreign Trade is an autonomous public business school established in 1963 by the Government of India that is also by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. To help professionalize the country's foreign trade management, generating, analyzing and disseminating data, increase exports by developing human resources and conducting research were the main purpose behind its establishment. Its flagship program is the Master of Business Administration in International Business, which is also known as MBA in IB. It is the only institute among the top 10 business schools of India that offers this program, catalyzing fresh and innovative ideas, concepts and skills in order to internationalize the Indian economy, it is mandate. It also acts as the primary provider of training and research-based consultancy in the areas of international business, both for the corporate sector, government and the student community are the areas where the institute visualizes its future role. IAFT started out as a center to provide foreign trade advice to the governments and has since played an instrumental role in conducting research in trade policy formation. IIFT was conferred to the status of deemed university in 2002. 8th Federation of Indian Export Organization Set up in 1965, the Federation of Indian Export Organization is under the aegis of Ministry of Commerce, functions as an apex body of export promotion organizations and institutions in the country. It is registered under the Society's Registration Act 21 of 1860 with its headquarters in Delhi and regional offices in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata and chapters in Jaipur, Kanpur, Ludhiana, Ahmedabad, Indore, Hyderabad, Kochi, Bangalore, Coimbatore, Bhuvneshwar, Ranchi and Guwahati. It also acts as a medium for discussion between exporters and policy makers and has been instrumental in promoting the efforts of Indian exporting community. It is an ISO 9001 to 2008 certified organization, rendering an integrated package of services to various organizations connected with export promotion is the main objective of FIEO. Ninth, Indian Diamond Institute, established as a society in the year 1978 at Surat, Gujarat. The Indian Diamond Institute, that is IDI, has the objective of imparting education in the field of gem and jewelry sector, including diamond manufacturing aspects and thereby enhancing the quality, design and global competitiveness of the Indian jewelry. It is sponsored by the Department of Commerce and functions as a project of Gems and Jewelry Export Promotional Council, which is also known as GJEPC. It has evolved itself gradually into a premier institute for imparting technical skill to diamonds, gems and jewellery industry over a period of 36 years. 10th, National Centre for Trade Information came into being on 31st of March 1995 as a company under Section 25 of Companies Act 1956. The National Centre for Trade Information started functioning with effect from March 1996. 
Its administration of affairs is done by a board of directors which includes representatives from Ministry of Commerce and Industry, National Informatics Center, Indian Institute of Foreign Trade and Directorate General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics, representatives from India Trade Promotion Organization and other export promotion councils, apex bodies are also its part. 11th, India Brand Equity Foundation which is known as IBEF, a trust established by the Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India in 2003. It works with the objective of promotion and creation of international awareness of the Made in India label in markets overseas. Facilitation of dissemination of knowledge of Indian products and services is also its role. Towards this objective, IBEF works closely with the stakeholders across government and industry. Summary Let us now summarize what we have discussed in this module. Given this present scenario of high interdependence, the role of organizations for trade promotion is something whose existence is inevitable and India is no different. In India, international trade plays a crucial role and hence the importance of various institutions related to the promotion of trade arises. India has a very well structured framework of institutions related to the promotion of trade. India has an intricate framework to support international trade. The present module discussed the institutional framework and the various supporting organizations in detail and dwelt deep into the characteristics of each of these institutions.